I start playing the McConnell shot and we're live again. <laughs> Joe, sir, what the hell was that? I don't. I've never seen NC State win a game like that before, with a little bit of a miracle shot, fluky yeah. shot, bank yeah. shot from Michael O'Connell. With quite frankly, an old recipe there, the fouls, because Virginia inexplicably, while they're sitting there dotting threes, can't make free throws. They can't. It's the strangest thing. They're not a bad shooting team. I know you were. You were. But they're a bad free throw shooting. You team. were preaching that on on press row, and with about thirty seconds left in regulation, you're like foul. You want a foul? Now they ended up missing the three, um, and Kevin Keats wisely calls a timeout. They try to draw something up. Virginia's defense was relentless. Yeah. NC State looked like they were shook. A lot of ways. Like the fact that they even fought back to that point was impressive because I there was a moment there early where. It looked pretty evident that State was just gassed, and not just DJ Burns, who didn't go, didn't go for a rebound. He was quickly brought out. They bring Middle, Middlebrooks back in, and then there was a sequence where NC State wanted a foul, didn't get it. Virginia then dot to three. NC State goes to the other end with an empty possession, kind of a tired leg shot with Virginia's perimeter defense being what it was, and then they go back down the. Was it McNeely goes back down the court? It hits another three, and I'm thinking, okay, well. Get it. They valiant effort, man. Valiant yeah, no effort. Shame. No shame. I'm thinking about how to talk about it, whatever. But state, you know, as has been evidenced at moments this season, clearly here in Washington, DC, they have not quit. Uh, they found something else in the tank that I think a lot of people did not think they had. I saw UVA fans walking out of here thinking they had the win, which is not exactly a commitment to the end of the clock bit that Virginia fans love. Remember, they cheer shot clock violations. But then, you know, after that sequence, after the timeout and the play, and they looked a little off sorts, and again, credit to Virginia's defense, and they don't get a real good shot off in that situation, I thought the game was was over. So this is where your this is where your free throw shooting situation comes into play. They do put Virginia on the line. And what happens, Joe? He misses. Yeah. And gives them a chance to tie the game, put it into overtime. Um, I listen, uh, there's a lot of things to talk about from this game. And if you, if you want to start diving into them right now, we can starting we, with, we can. starting with Tony Bennett made his bones as a defensive coach. Yes. And one of the tenants of his defensive principles is to double the post. Mm -hmm. So why in 2024, he was allowing DJ Burns at the end of that game to go one-on-one -on -one is completely and totally beyond me. All right, that's bad. That's a bad strategy from a smart coach. And then what happened in overtime? In overtime, they just kept going to him. Like they, the thing about Virginia is, and I want here. I just said that was a bad strategy, but I want to be some. I want to be clear about something. Mm -hmm. I saw Virginia in Raleigh uh, on January sixth, and they were garbage, garbage. And they figured out a way to play basketball the exact way that they need to play basketball mm -hmm. to get to the point where I do believe they will make the NCAA tournament. That is a complete and total credit to Tony given that roster and, and the restraints of that roster and the shortcomings of that roster. Okay. But for state to turn this thing around just for a second here, because the way that they won the game, you realize NC state played 31 games in the regular season, Joe, mm -hmm. Michael O'Connell had, that means Michael O'Connell had 30 chances to score in double digits in consecutive games. He did not once during the regular season score in double digits in consecutive games. He somehow gets to D.C., and he looks like Corey Kispert all of a sudden. <laughs> he scores 16 against Louisville, 16 against Syracuse, 12 against Duke, and now 12 against UVA, all in the process of making uh, eight three-pointers in these four games, and all of them have been huge. Yeah, The contributions from everyone have been huge. D.J. Horn, you know, Reese Beekman's a really good uh, defender, struggled a little bit today. That That's to be expected if you're NC State, but you cannot say enough good things about the way state kind of brother-in-law this thing. If I told you that Burns only had 19, it felt like he had 40. Yeah. It felt like he had half of state's points. Yeah. Truth is he only had 19. Mm -hmm. About Tony Bennett and some of the things that are going on. But before we get to Tony, just real, just real quick. Yeah. I have been critical of DJ Burns and, and why this team put itself in a position at the end of the regular season. A lot of that was on DJ Burns. But he was overtime. 
And now when we've seen him play here, again, talking about being effective, mm -hmm. it's not just him. It's O'Connell. It's Horn. It's Taylor. It's Casey Morsell. It's all of them. And that's what they thought they were going to be at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And it, for whatever reason, all of them we've detailed before, that's not who they were during the regular season. But who they are right now is a very dangerous team because they're desperate. They're playing with urgency and they're hungry. We're now calling this the duh system. <laughs> How long did you workshop that? I, I didn't. <laughs> I, I didn't. Our friend Aaron Beard, after I tweeted, desperate, urgency, hunger. Got to have all three. Duh. Look, I mean, I I don't I don't see it tomorrow for NC State, but that's the conversation that we I mean, it's already Saturday. So I mean we could have it later Saturday if you want to. I'm I'm more fascinated by the fact that NC State found another gear that as gassed as DJ Burns looked, he was overtime and getting to the yeah. fighting through because we talked about this a lot. With DJ Burns, they've only had two years to figure out how to officiate them, and they still don't. Okay. And NC State also overcame some things that would have cost them in the end because of the classic NC State shit motif, right? There was a sequence there where I'm shocked that they did not go to the monitor. They love going to the monitor. I mean, they love going to the monitor at the ACC tournament or just an ACC basketball. And they didn't go to the monitor for that tip in for Virginia. They're yeah. late. And then on the other sequence, they. Roger Ayers was insistent, no shot for DJ Burns yeah. on a shot that went in. I'm like, whoa, okay, what's going on here? But again, those are the typical things yeah. that NC State fans are accustomed to seeing going, all right, well, look, all hell's going to break loose. Same with that final shot. That shot doesn't go in. But Michael O'Connell's had a beautiful arc this entire week. And that thing well, I mean, just that banged. That, <laughs> I know, but it, I mean, it was just he like gave a, it a chance. Yeah, he absolutely. gave it a chance and it, and it banked in. And look, I we ended up kind of in the background. I, Shout out to all the listeners who will tag us on Twitter uh, because of the way that the camera angles are working. Apparently, behind that bench, there's an ESPN angle when they highlight yeah. the coach, yeah. right? And typically, you know, you'll 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 get a glimpse of us. And the the Michael O'Connell shot, which I'm going to turn the volume down so that you know the the YouTube police maybe don't get us. But on the final shot of uh, of this of the of the of, of regulation, sorry, I'm tired. Let's let's you could see me clapping slowly and laughing and Joe, you stand up. Uh, one of our listeners, Matt, <laughs> decided to isolate this a little bit more. He's like, yep, first thing I saw on the replay were you two guys and, and your reaction. And, and there's really only one way to describe this, you know, what's happening with you and me. Yeah, that, that was the anti uh, Jay Wright. <laughs> Like I'm like that never goes in for NC State, <laughs> right? Right? Like yeah, you you ever. you stood up because you're going. Am I witnessing Law of the Wolf in real time like this? And of course, I react if if people have not seen me watching a game in person, I typically laugh at things because it's all amusing in the in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. It's entertainment, and that was a pretty entertaining ending uh, when it was all said and done. And that that's why I reacted the way that I reacted. It was like, come on, man. Like, are you serious? Like, how could you not react when you see something like that? I, how could you not I, I react? Know, I've, I've seen, you know, Chandler Parsons hit that shot from deeper. I would, I've yeah, seen funny all that, of these other shots go in. I had this, that. You know, it, it kind of reminded me, State in 2012 makes the Sweet 16, and they run a play at the end of that game to try to get a three to Scott Wood. Instead, yeah. Richard Howell ends up taking the shot. It hits the rim. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it was like, that's what usually happens. You get a good look, and you're like, oh, man, if, that, if only that went in. This is the first time in 30 years that uh, NC State doesn't get a if only that went in ne moment. Never forget an Anthony Grundy bank in against UNC Greensboro several years ago. That several. Yes. Several. It so, might have been. It might have been two thousand one. Same, same stakes, Joe. But yeah. same stakes. Just never forget. Don't tell me it doesn't happen. I witnessed it. Okay. Don't tell me it never happens. Anyway, uh, some of the some of the comments. Preston Beverly. Yeah, it was a regular season game though. Against yeah, that's Clemson. True. That's yeah. true. From Charlie, love ACC basketball. What a funny evening. Yes, it was an it no, was an absolutely fun evening. Charlie also wants to make sure you get some coffee and liquor in you soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, from uh, our guy Kevin uh, over at Sweetwater, Gary Hahn, DJ Burns is a man. That's what he said in OT. Yeah, he was a man. The, again, he dug deep and found another gear that I was not uh, quite 
expecting in overtime from the can, the obvious slow clap. Like I said, guys, like I'm just, I'm in the moment, man. And when stuff like that happens in real time in front of you, that's what, look, I've said this before. If I cannot find enjoyment and wonder at live sporting events like tonight, if I can't find that anymore, then I should no longer be doing this. Yeah. So the fact that that is the reaction that tells you, yeah, we should probably be doing this. And then here's Eric. Shame on Tony Bennett for not fouling up three with under five seconds to go. This is the amazing plot twist of the night that I wanted to get to. Because typically, in games like this, it's, what's Kevin doing? Why can't he do this? Oh, this is terrible. This is why. Blah, 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 blah. Plot twist. It's Tony Bennett who's the coach tonight that people are second-guessing and wondering what the hell he was thinking and where he had a brain fart at the end of that game. It's a, as if the game ended before the Alex O'Connell shot because... Virginia was shook after that. They just did not recover well, and neither did Tony Bennett. I was surprised by the way they handled the fouling up three situation at the end. I was surprised by that. Um, I, apparently, that's his pattern that he doesn't do that. So I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. You know, sometimes you got to. You know, in the moment, you might want to change your. Uh, you might want to change it. Uh, let's see what else we else. Oh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? As we're doing this live on YouTube, I'm going through the comment section, but I wanted to point this out as it relates to gambling. And I do think there's finally a connection. They are four and oh, since gambling has gone legal <laughs> in the state of North Carolina. And here well, you would have lost money on fading them tonight, ah, but whatever. you were happy about it. But from B, yeah, BK Ron four and oh, since betting was made legal, go pack. And again, this is all based on what it's all based on what? Oh, state fans are convinced. <laughs> <laughs> Their emotional hedge is at least part of the reason that the team is making the run that they yeah, are. From Evan, State plus two and a half turned from heartbreak into elation. So there you go. Oh, you're doing it wrong, though, if you took State. What's, what's that? You have to go the other way. You have to take the other team. That's how you emotionally edge. Eh, okay. 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 So let's, let's see. This is from... Uh, Zamash, serious question. Does this tournament run confirm roster mismanagement by Keats or is it March mag uh, magic? Middlebrooks, O'Connell, Diara have exploded in okay. this tournament. Okay. Listen, I just told you a stat. If you're maybe you put it up before I gave you the stat. Yeah. You can't lucidly expect a player who's never scored in double digits in consecutive games to do that in four consecutive games. So it's not roster mismanagement. Again, what they wanted Michael O'Connell to be was somebody who didn't make mistakes, mm -hmm. who was an older player, who likely would feed DJ Burns in the post. That would be part of his role, right? So what O'Connell has done, they've bring, been bringing Horn off of the bench because of his hip and because they keep winning. And you don't change things when you win. That's not what you do. So don't. Don't do this with the roster <laughs> mismanagement, <laughs> particularly when in the second half of this game, as he did against Notre Dame when they beat him earlier in the year, as he did against Clemson down the stretch in the game that they won there, he rests DJ with, with about eight minutes to about four minutes yeah, so that he can close the game. He can finish the game. And I, th I think you saw him do that today. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's because here's another Here's another comment from C. Smith 84 said a few weeks ago about Keats that he bought the puzzle. He just couldn't put it together. It's not all that dissimilar to yeah. what we talked about, uh, about Duke and John Shire. Here, here are all these ingredients that sound pretty good. And why, why does it not taste as well? That was the comment that you made yesterday. And I do think that I think Keats talked about this this week. I'm, all this stuff is running together as these nights kind of go on and on and on. Where Keats to talk about transfers and acclimating and getting used to everything. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer to cook. And this is something that we've consistently talked about in the past. How do you get pieces from the outside to come in yeah. with freshmen and make them work? Guys that have been there and have understood their roles. How do you get them to work with this new guy? Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't, right? Uh, sometimes you hit in the portal. Sometimes you don't. You do have to allow for teams to kind of come around. I don't think it takes away from the conversation you and I had post-Clemson, okay? Yeah. When, when you find yourself in the great game, after beating Clemson, and even Kevin, this is why Kevin Keats was so mad after that Syracuse game, is because they put themselves back in the mix, and that was the response. At that point, it's almost like, it's kind of like me rolling my eyes over the Duke comments as of late, where they're going to have like this team meeting, and they're going to do some soul searching. Y'all, that's the kind of stuff that you do after you lose to Carolina before you go to the ACC tournament. Not after this, like when it's actual real time. So, um, some of this stuff comes together, some of this stuff doesn't. Uh, from Paul, my NC State wife refuses to watch the title game with me and my Tar Heel family. 
Why can't you just watch as a family? If Roy Williams and Joe Giglio can bond over golf balls, why can't a husband and wife be okay watching this game? So Roy has been sitting right behind the scorer's table. I haven't had a chance to catch up with them until the halftime of, of the Carolinas went over pit. And uh, I said to him, Hey, uh, I texted you during the state game and you had, cause he had this amazing <laughs> Argyle sweater on and it was like yellow and it wasn't really, it was like orange. Maybe there was no like Carolina blue in it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that sweater is amazing, but you need more red. So when I saw him, I said, Hey, I texted you. He goes, Oh, I saw it. I ignored it. <laughs> I said, I said, oh, well, now okay, people want to come up and take pictures with him. So I said, oh, Roy, I'm just going to stand here and do this while people take yeah. pictures. And he goes, you think you're the only one who asked me to do that? He goes, I got all these people come up. And they want me to do that. I know. He's like, I won't. He's like, I told him. He swore. He's like, got to get that bullshit out of yeah, here. Get and that's here. where you took the picture of me laughing. Yes. If, if people want the answer to what was no, actually no, said. No, I wanted the wrong answers only. <laughs> wrong answers wrong, only. Although uh, I think Beer Can and uh, Turn 4 had the, the right answer, and that was, can I get your sweater? Or can I have a sweater yeah, like I, that? No, I did. And I, I asked know, for one. And I know you want one of those. Yeah. Uh, from Howard, does NC State play in the first four after this run, barring a loss, maybe asking with rose-colored glasses on. We're, Patrick nah. was not. Patrick Patrick was roaming around, yeah. but I guess we could have asked him, but I don't I don't see that. No, they, they need to win. And if you remember a couple of years ago when Georgia Tech won, they, they were absurd, seated absurdly low yeah. as the ACC champion, which NC State would be in this case as a well if they were yeah. to find a way to win the game. Uh, from Nathan, is State cooked probably? That was a tweet that I had put out there. I mean, I, I said, hey, I said, probably. I also, thought it was I thought it was over. Also, th this is look, it was look, it was 53 46 after McNeely made yeah. his fifth three. And there's only four minutes left in the game. And state did visibly look tired. This is something that you and I occasionally deal with as we're reacting to things in real time and just kind of offering our opinions on what we see. OK. Yeah, especially when we're here. Just because. Don't get on my ass. This is all I ask. I'm going to look at the camera when I talk about this. Don't get on my ass for saying something out loud that you were probably saying while watching. Okay. Just th that's the thing that always bothers me. Always bothers me. 99% of people watching that game. If you're a state fan, you're watching that game and you're going, yup, it's a wrap. Hey, good fight. Good effort. They're cooked. They're gassed. Okay. I saw the same thing too. And in that moment, I'm like, yeah, man, they look like they're done. They've run out of gas. A lot of other people thought that, but I'm impressed. That's, you know, that's why when the Alex O'Connell shot went in or the Michael O'Connell shot went in, I always say Alex O'Connell. I don't know why he, he hasn't left my heart from Duke. So you're the only one who remembers. Like, I know it was, it was the tattoo. Did he go to Creighton? Yeah, he went to Creighton. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. So when the, the O'Connell shot went in, yeah, man, that's why people react the way that they did, because it's like, holy shit, I can't believe what I just saw. All right. So look, yes. So did I think they were cooked? Yeah. About 99% of other people thought they were yeah. cooked. I'm not going to apologize for that. A couple of things. I actually told this to Roy at halftime. I go, you know, you won your first ACC title against state. Maybe Hubert can win his first ACC title against state. And that could be the case. Um, the last time state went was 07. It was in Tampa. They played four games in four days. They lost to Carolina, a really good Carolina team. Ran out of gas. Yeah. 97, they became the first team to win four games in four days. Mm -hmm. oh, excuse me, play four games in four days. Lost to Shimon William and Williams and Carolina at 97. Dean Smith's last ACC title coming against NC State. And now NC State tries to become, they already are the first team who will play five games in five days in the ACC tournament. Yeah. So they will now try to win their 11th ACC title first since 1987 when they won and beat Carolina in Landover. All right, Nathan, you were kidding. I apologize. It's late. I'm tired. You're not the only person who's made that comment. So that's why I was like, y'all, but Nathan, shoot me an email. The OG at uh, wait, what's our email now? The OG goes digital at gmail.com. Yeah. Nathan, email me. Okay. I'll send you something. As an apology. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what else we have here in the in the uh, live, uh, the YouTube comments here. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. It was from Ryan. The only mismanagement was not playing Mo more all year. He's a glue guy 
uh, any good team's got to have. I, I get where that's coming from. I think they handled Mo Diara probably as best they could because there were some moments earlier in the season that Mo Diara had no business being on the court because he was a bit of a liability. That's a credit to him for making himself as valuable as he's made himself here down the stretch. But I remember some early season games. I know you were high on Mo Diara yeah. earlier in the year, but there were some moments where he just kind of was overmatched, especially but defensively. He played 20 minutes a game this yeah. year. Like, you have Middlebrooks and DR were bought in. Again, I can't stress this enough. The way the team is playing here in Washington, save for the first 10 minutes against Louisville, is the way that the team was constructed to play. Mm -hmm. It just didn't do this for stretches other than the first half against Carolina and the game at Clemson. This was what the team was supposed to be. And, and the home win over Big Forest, if we're being honest, as well. This was what the team was supposed to be. And the, how, why they've figured it out, why they've played with the desperation that they have and the urgency that they have, why it's worked for them now, I cannot explain that to you. Other than what I would say to you is DJ Burns, everyone last year was in love with DJ Burns. Quite frankly, he hasn't had those moments this year until he's gotten here. Mm -hmm. Now he has to get over the final hurdle when he plays Carolina and Armando Baycott tomorrow. I mean, there, there's that's the thing that I would be concerned about, not being tired tomorrow. It's that... We've already know that NC State can play its best. Its best 20 minutes were in Chapel Hill two mm -hmm. weeks ago. They still lost the game. Cause because Carolina defensively is, you know, it's a horses for courses situation. It is. It is. About about North Carolina to transition to what we saw against Pitt. Uh, my immediate takeaway both both games were entertaining as hell. Yeah. Both games were entertaining. Props as to hell. Pitt fans. I know they've been to ACC football championship games and won the ACC football championship. Great crowd. This felt like, oh, shit, Pitt is really in the ACC moment to me. Yeah. Because their fans, it's the this, location. this is an event in D.C. that's about four hours from them. Yes. They showed out. Look, this is this is a, I, I've said it before on other live podcasts, that D.C. is a great location for the ACC tournament. Gary Williams whining aside, they should probably have it here more often. I, I get why it's going to be back in North Carolina for the foreseeable future. But we can table that conversation. But Pitt, to, Pitt to me, that was a tough-ass game between two tough teams. And my takeaway from North Carolina, and it's, it's funny because my brother had texted me. He, he had texted me something sarcastic uh, while North Carolina was kind of struggling through it. And um, what? It, let me see if I can pull up my... Uh, let me see if I can pull up my brother's text. I'll now I'll answer this question while we're there. Yeah. From Jonathan. Who are the zebras tomorrow? We're, we're looking at a Bill Covington. Jamie Lucky, we believe, is retiring and will be give, given this game. Tomorrow, that's not words that state fans want to hear. Um, so we'll see who the third official is. I don't know. You just keep in mind, Roger Ayers worked this game. We saw um, Ron Groover earlier and Teddy Valentine. That means they can't. They will not work the gotcha. final. Gotcha. Uh, so we do know by process of elimination who the guys will. I want to say a little bit something about the officiating because I saw okay. Brian Kersey this afternoon leaving the hotel. We, we were on the streets there on, what are we on? E.G.? We are on. We walking down G to get here. Either way, I Either saw. Way, yeah. I saw Curse. We were talking because um, I asked him about the technical last night and why that wasn't Duke's ball. He explained the rule to me, the whole thing. And I said to him, I, I said, I feel like your crew has done a better. Your crew, the ACC guys, have done a better job this year of letting teams play. Okay, and I think the game has been more physical across the board mm -hmm. in the ACC. The flopping, they call less charges. There, there's been a consistent effort, in my opinion, to let teams play. Sure. Now, what I will say about today's crew that I did not think was good for the game. You had Tony Henderson, who basically refused to blow his whistle. AJ Desai, a little bit less. And then yeah. you have the captain in Roger Ayers kind of coming in and trying to clean everything up. And for people who don't like Roger Ayers, he's actually, I mean, Ron Groover is probably going to be graded as the, their highest, best official, but Roger Ayers is right there with him. So I actually appreciated what Ayers did today in this game, but I also, you, there's no other way to look at it that Virginia literally fouls on every possession because their premise is they won't call all of them. Right. And it's actually a really smart strategy if you think about it. So uh, that can be frustrating if you're watching it because they, they get away with a lot of contact. As I've said before, and one of our listeners so adroitly did the homework for me and pointed out uh, free throw attempts and fouls that are called at home for Virginia as opposed to when they're not at John Paul Jones Arena. But I, 
I did not like that Roger had to do everything mm. in the ACC semifinals should not be that type of crew where you have that type of weak link that Tony Henderson was tonight. Yeah. So I, I don't like that, but I do. I will say I, I appreciated the way that Roger tried to steer the ship. And I thought a couple of times he comes over he did. where Kevin wanted a foul, didn't get it or, or a call was made. And he just because I think Henderson was actually going to tee him up. Yeah. And and Roger just came over and Roger said, he down. goes, Kevin, stop. Yes. He even held up like the stop sign like he was yes. a crossing guard. Yes. He goes, Kevin, yes. stop. Somebody had to be the adult. Yeah. And he was. He was. And that's that's why, you know, a lot of people get on Roger Ayers' ass about this kind of stuff. He is a very good official. Yeah. Knows the rep. He has the repertoire. I thought he, I thought the, he did a nice job in this game. That's right. The rapport, I should yeah. say, with uh, with these coaches. Um, We'll get back to state here in a second. By the way, I noticed we got about like 700 people watching on YouTube live right now. If you hit a like, just hit the like. It helps us out. Yeah. Interact. Interact. Yeah, the, the comments get, do help. So get thank in the you. comments, that stuff. And I, I'll, I'll, we'll get back to the comments here in a little bit. But I wanted to read this text from my brother. He texted me at 816 yesterday. That's funny. Uh, he does this sarc the sarcasm font. UNC is hungry. And I was like, Pitt's good, dude. Like, wh what are we talking? Like, that's a, that should be a tournament team. Pitt's yeah. good. He's like, well, you made it sound like UNC was just going to be unstoppable. And even my own brother falls victim to, like, what did you hear when you heard me talking about North Carolina yesterday after they whopped on uh, on Florida State? The point that I'm making with Carolina and what I've been saying about North Carolina over the last couple of weeks is that there is not a toughness question about this group. They can find different, muddier ways to win. I thought tonight in what was going to be a physical game, was going to be a defensive game, ended up being true, especially with Harrison Ingram, who did a wonderful job on Blake Hinson. And that pit was up. Blake Hinson had zero points. Blake Hinson didn't really get into, oh, real quick. I just need a simple yes or no. Because <laughs> somebody, so so Patrick Stevens of the Washington Post just walked in to say bye, but we do have a bracketology question okay. for you. So why don't you come over here real All quick. Right. I'm going to hand you the mic in a second. All right. I mean, just for a simple yes or no. State getting to the championship, no chance they're in the NCAA tournament, right? No. 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 Okay. They if, have to win. If they win, what kind of seed would they be? Well, remember Virginia Tech a couple years ago as a seven seed here was an 11 seed in the NCAA tournament. That's about where NC State would land. Okay. So it's as 10 or 11. Okay. Thank you. Have a safe trip back. Yes. All right. See, see, well, you'll see me tomorrow. You'll see Joe. I have previous family obligations. <laughs> travels, I will have safe travels. Yeah. So a little programming note. I am going home tomorrow. Joe is sticking around. The original plan was for us to leave tomorrow morning, you know, anticipating maybe just a local. We were not anticipating a state Carolina championship game in Washington, D.C. As somebody pointed out, y'all keep saying it feels like 1987. No, it feels like 2007, which a little bit, a little, little bit, bit like that, a little bit like that. Uh, so we'll be doing an we'll be doing a show after the game tomorrow. I'll just be doing it back from the home base. Joe, you're going to be here with the equipment uh, and doing it from the broadcast bunker on uh, um, in the Capital One Center. But back to North Carolina really quick. I forgot who we were, which basketball analysts were we talking to earlier? And they basically talked about whether or not North Carolina had a level of like griminess to them, right? Oh, it was Josh Pastner. It was Josh Pastner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't remember who it was we were talking to. And he and he wondered. And, and Josh is usually like the UNC whisperer. And when he said that Carolina didn't have a, a, a griminess to him, I pushed back on that because based on what I had seen from North Carolina all year up until that point, they showed flashes of it. You don't get from the January hot streak where you played like you did defensively and come out of a little bit of a trough and tough it out the way that they did without having an element of that. They won some games that they probably could have lost last year. And we talked about those confidence builders, you know, beating Pitt, beating Virginia. They weren't the prettiest games, but they still found ways to do it. That showed me a hell of a lot more about this North Carolina squad. So tonight against Pitt was further, further proof that, this is a team that wants to win this tournament and also is letting everybody know what it's about. They're letting themselves know what it's about. They're locked in, man. I, I, I know, Locked in gets used a lot. You and I were actually joking about this earlier. Like, I know when my 15-year-old says he's locked in, he's very much not, not locked in. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, no, you're not locked in. 
No, Carolina's locked in. And just because they it, they looked great against Florida State, they took Florida State's soul. But tonight's game against Pitt was going to be a hell of a much more yeah. difficult contest because Jeff Capel does a hell of a job with that group. They got some dudes. And I thought Harrison Ingram was easily the player of the game. I know that Armando Baycott on R.J. Davis finally got going late, but the way Harrison Ingram kept them defensively in a position where Blake Hinson could never activate, man, that said a lot. I like the way Carolina played tonight. Same. Same. And, and we know we talked to uh, their assistant coaches and Clint Waltney. Yep. After the game, and just said, you know, these guys, they they have a different mentality and uh, than a typical Carolina team. I just want to answer this question from Will real quick. Has any team won a conference tournament with five consecutive consecutive wins? Yes, UConn did it in 2011 uh, at the Big East tournament, and then actually went on to win the national championship the same year. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's a one notable one. There there may have been others where there's been uh, five and five, but. Uh, that was that one. And then the other one I wanted to look for was this one from Stevie B. Mm -hmm. That that was my reaction. That <laughs> shot never goes in. Right. Ever. Not for state. So that's why uh, that's why you looked the way that you looked in that um in that video that was on uh well, plus Flutter the bench was getting up. Yeah, there so, was like that. I couldn't see. Yeah, there was that too. What was going on? What and I, I mean, I saw the ball come out of O'Connell's hand, and I yeah. saw it bank, but I couldn't see quite see the reaction to everything too. So yeah, so the um, I'm trying to see again, we're do, doing this all kind of live on on YouTube right now. Shout out to Aaron. <laughs> Shout out to Aaron over at uh, Sound Off. Uh, who? Oh, wait a minute! What did I do? Did I? You just kicked me uh, out. Hold on a second. <laughs> Your hold. second camera experience. I'm having a terrible time here, aren't I? <laughs> My God! I don't even think you've been drinking. No, I'm just tired. <laughs> this is what happens when I get tired. I just get yeah, loopy. Dude. Again, one more time here, people. Yeah, beating Clemson on a random <laughs> fucking Tuesday <laughs> is not hitting a 25 foot bank shot to put you in the NC the ACC final for the first time in since 07. Okay. Holy smokes. So Aaron over at Sound Off, they help out. And shout out to Anna, who helped out with our graphics, uh, does our graphics, and she did a great job with our slide for uh, for the ACC tournament. Uh, he just pulled a straight screen grab of you standing up. What are you looking at, by the way? The, by that point, I'm looking at the board. Okay. Because, I, I mean, I wanted to see if it counted. Again, I was waiting for there to be a mystery review or some sort of, like, he stepped out of bounds or something stupid. <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> 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 I was there in 97 when they went on the run. That was yeah. my senior year at, at state. Okay. Okay. And I, I was thinking, oh, they'll, they, they'll be back. You know, then they go back in 02 and you're like, oh, then they get killed by Duke. And then the thing happens in 03 where Reddick becomes JJ Reddick. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, oh, okay, well, maybe they'll get another one. And then Sid in his first year, right? But yeah, as love look, loves the cover too says, you were waiting for the law of the wolf to take effect. I, That's I, why again, you stood up. I didn't believe it. <laughs> That, that's that is the again it's the anti jay wright like jay wright was mr cool i was like what just happened oh, man that oh. was my exact reaction did that really just happen yeah from uh from blind lemon jello going back to the unc pit game pit is a dangerous squad but carolina really is about this work agree unc has a clear goal no doubt and that's the thing it, and arizona it, lost today too they're trying I, to get been, that one i've been trying to tell people for however many weeks that carolina should be the number one seed. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that it played out the way that it did. Carolina does not need to win tomorrow to be the number one seed, period. Tennessee lost their opening game in the conference tournament, and Arizona lost to another dog shit Pac-12 team because they're all terrible, okay? So I think there's another clip here. This is a uh, shout-out to uh, Mark Armstrong, who... Um, See, there's other people who are reacting too. This, this, Corey. There's Corey. Corey. <laughs> Corey lost it right there, man. I, I didn't see this. I mean, obviously, you and I were just like laughing in the situation, but I mean, we're talking hugs, all that stuff. Look, man. Vashti has a good one there too. Oh, wait, she's wait, like, what? Where's Vashti? Oh, there we go. Right next to Corey. That's right. That's right. Because when I was laughing, clapping back, she did, <laughs> Look at she her did face. turn back. She's like, she's what like, in the what? world? <laughs> Again, these things don't happen to NC State. <laughs> no, they don't. They definitely don't. So uh, about tomorrow, about tomorrow, um, I don't think that NC State is going to win. I think for a variety of reasons. I think mostly it has to do with the fact that Carolina is locked in. Carolina's on this mission. 
I do think that at some point the fatigue is going to kick in for this state squad. It's hard enough to win three in a row. Certainly was hard enough to win four in a row. Now you are trying to win five in a row against a team that is a final four contender. That's a tough one, man. And and, and if they lose to Carolina, yeah, it's going to, I understand that state fans are going to be mad because you're losing to Carolina and everything else. And you'll hear it from Carolina fans, but I don't think in any way, shape, or form takes away from the entire week that we've seen at FNC State. It's been a fun week, man. Which way you want me to play this? However you want to play it, dude. What's NC State's record since Theo Pinson ran his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, just maybe, hear me out. All of these Carolina and Duke <sighs> and Virginia and all these other fans of all these other schools can certainly have the quest- can certainly have the conversation in, in rooms, in back rooms, and to themselves, and in their group chats. Yeah. What the fuck has NC State ever won? <laughs> what have those motherfuckers ever done? <laughs> Every year, it's going to be your year. It's never your year. Yeah. Those were the words that came out of his mouth. Yes. Pretty yes. sure since then, they've won four basketball games. I don't know. One of them, extremely <laughs> unlikely. One of them, ex- extremely unlikely. Now, it could just be, he knows. He knows. He knew the script. Yeah, that tomorrow it ends. It could just be that. That that's that that's all it could be. But maybe, maybe all state needed after all of these years. Yeah, they just needed someone to articulate it in the way that he did. Maybe you know you might be honest. Instead here, of Joe. instead of state fans being the ones saying it's our year. Yeah. Plus, also, my gosh, uh, at the risk of uh, shitting where I eat here, state fans, where are you at? What do you mean? I there was there were a lot of Virginia fans here today. Yeah, there were a lot of Carolina fans here today. I'm, okay, I'm glad there you brought that up. There were a lot of Pitt fans here today. I'm glad you brought that up because DJ Burns talked about this yesterday. After they, um, they yeah. In fairness, I will say there are I know a number of state fans who are thinking to themselves, if they've won these four games without me being in the building, there is not a single chance of my life of me showing up in that building. To, to change the mojo. So I, I do get that part. Yeah. But I mean, it was it was noticeable today that the lack of red in the building was was very noticeable. So I think so a couple things to that, right? And now maybe I'm workshopping this live. Yesterday they beat Duke and DJ Burns pointed out that they weren't cheering for us. No, they were cheering cheering against Duke. They were cheering against Duke. Yeah, he's like let's 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 call it what it is. We know who they're rooting for. It won't. It wasn't for us, right? And I think, I think that that's actually kind of helped with NC State and the kind of attitude they've taken throughout the NCAA tournament, including you know Bayheim calling out the three goggles and what have you won in the last forty years and all that stuff. You notice that Kevin Keats last night put up the three goggles in the in the post game press conference. Uh, shout out to my guy, Chris, who actually had texted that to me uh, this morning when he was like, I don't think I've seen this screen grab anywhere. So just so you know, I think Keats is even in on the joke, too. I don't have time to pull it up on the uh, on the stream yard, but that's Keats doing the three goggles. Breaking T put out a shirt with the three goggles. Right. And including why not us? So there's a little element there of um, like, oh, I'm sorry, we're still here. I respect that. And if that's what they want to pick up on, we'll see how far it can carry them tomorrow against North or later today against North Carolina. Let's see. Uh, f- see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, from uh, from Nathaniel Gilio, if you can get me Ovi's media pass, I'll be up there tomorrow. <laughs> that's five, you know. If you look like me, if you're a balding, soon to be 45 year old with a gray beard and a sweet dad bod, hey man, I'll give you my press pass. How are they gonna be able to tell the difference? The only requirement is. You got to wear plaid. That's it. In fact, I actually thought about that. Mitch Northrum is just hanging out and uh, he's a wonderful photographer. And I did notice this in the picture that he took of you, me and Roy Williams uh, at halftime. It's almost like you did not understand the assignment, Joe. No, no stripes. No pattern. Just no, I mean, there's like a fuzz there. Yeah, it's got like a, a bit TV of... end of night fuzz. Yeah, yeah. But look, if you are somebody who looks just like me from the back, Okay. And you have a shacket. You have a shacket. You got the skin yarmulke on top and uh, the beard and the uh, and the glasses. Then, yeah, you can have my press pass. That's fine. We can make that. We can make that work, maybe. So, anyway, 
Roy Williams dresses like he lost a bet. No, Roy Williams dresses like no. a retiree who enjoys golf. He dresses like someone who's got a contract with Peter Millar. <laughs> I would fucking kill for that contract. Are you kidding me? <laughs> From Clay, UNC fan state looks just as locked in as us, slightly less yeah. talented. I was cheering for state today. Won't be tomorrow, obviously. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. In fact, uh, Corey uh, from Pack Pride actually had pointed this out. I missed it. But he said, like, after uh, DJ Burns went strong to the rim, got the and one, that a Carolina fan was, like, fist pumping and, like, cheering him on and things like that. And I was like, yeah, this is, like, a classic. This is what makes this is what makes the ACC tournament unique. This is what makes the area unique. Yeah. This is what makes it fun. That, yes, in this moment, you can Still get, using that present tense. What? Makes makes i yeah. don't know how much longer it's gonna last yeah. i'm just saying okay and that's a point yeah. of, that's a point of contention we got a little alpha and omega going on here what are you saying you this is this get to your last call for basketball here last call for basketball alpha and the omega as it was in the beginning it shall be in the end okay i don't need to tell you who won the first acc title all right all right. They beat Wake Forest, though. They did not beat Carolina. Oh, geez. You really are feeling that law of the wolf in this Chili's tonight, aren't you? You got to be careful with that. <laughs> uh, from the Yeezy, Chung Yeezy, like halftime. I saw him. Um, I also saw Hanging uh, with John Nunley. Yeah, Mr. Nunley. And um, I just made the, the, the way the game was going. I'm like, Psh, first to 69 wins this one. Shout out to Tate Frazier. Race to 69. Here we go. And Chung's just like, dude. Nobody's getting to 69 tonight. So, mind you, it did take to get to overtime. But when it was 69 before NC State hit their winning free throws, I did yell at him. And I'm like, look at the scoreboard. He looks up. He goes, ah, damn it. You were right. There's so many 70s references to me today. Like, I I, I don't know what a I did Berber, to you people. I don't, know, card I don't know what I did to <laughs> hurt you people. Like, the motherfucker on Twitter was like, you look like B. Arthur. Like, <laughs> what? I mean, damn, man. You, you do need a haircut. But that's fine. But like, yeah, you, you, uh, you on one hand, that. I respect that you pulled like Maud out of your ass. <laughs> but I mean, come on, man. <laughs> if you're going to compare me to a golden girl, like uh, shit, I'll take, I'll take Sophia over B. Arthur from Bob. Agree. Dorothy. No UNC fans want to watch UVA in person uh, playing basketball again. Yeah. That that is that we that, that but is we true. also miss one of the all time great gambling moments in in history by not being able to put all of the OG taxes on Carolina tomorrow <laughs> against that <laughs> extremely pedestrian Virginia team. From William uh, Gilio kind of looks like Kevin Cronin's less successful brother. So I'm not Kevin I'm, Cronin. I'm gonna have to pull up that reference. I'm gonna have to pull up that reference. Okay. Well, uh, is it from the 70s? Because apparently that's all I've got. <laughs> Uh, what do we got here from Alex? Julio looks like a Scarface, Scarface. Mi Miami vibes. There we go. Yes, that's true. Push you, man. <laughs> Put that back in your mouth, man. You look like a <laughs> lizard. You look like a lizard, man. Uh, NC State should be in Dayton regardless, but tomorrow feels like destiny. What a game, oh, man. I can feel it. I can see people getting locked up on this one. I can feel people getting locked up it's on this one. It's the hope that kills you. you and, if Justin, UNC is locked up the one seat as well. They know, they, they know that now going into that game, given the results, I, I think they just want to keep keep no, it locked in. First of all, they haven't won the ACC title since 2016. Yes. That's enough for your coach to want to do that. So I look like I got kicked out of bartending school. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. From David, Ovias looks like a guy in Miami Vice holding the Uzi who gets <laughs> shot first when the drug deal goes bad. Yeah. yeah that's accurate. That's pretty good. That, that That is accurate. That is accurate. All right. I think we're running out of steam here uh, for a little OG after dark as we approach. Do we need to do a heads? One o'clock. Or this is, a, this is an OG special. Yeah, don't, we don't need to do anything. Okay, we'll give shouts to Hometown Realty, though, because they are helping us this week. Yes, yes. Hometown Realty has helped us this week to make this uh, make this ACC tournament action fun. We will, again, if you're just kind of tuning in, we will be doing another show tomorrow night. Schneider, Ken, you at two, Brute? Wow, Schneider? Oh, you look like any Schneider? Cigarettes rolled up in the... Oh. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. And Justin, I have not seen the picture of Jim Phillips, commissioner of the ACC, shocked by O'Connell shot. I have not seen that one yet. I have not seen one that. And uh, from 400 Bones, call me a Carolina fan that doesn't feel like any shade. Your Deeks, your pack, who cares? You guys make it fun. We appreciate that. Thank I'm you. glad 
I, and we'll close it on that. I'm glad that y'all uh, understand and kind of to steal a phrase from uh, Dan Lubitard, you get the show. So we appreciate that. Uh, sometimes I have to remind myself that a lot of people do get the show and I do appreciate that. So quick programming note for tomorrow. Joe will be here in D.C. I'm going home, but we are still doing an OG after dark immediately following that game. I'll be back in the home base. Joe will be here in the broadcast bunker. And you crashing at Ethan's? Probably. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, Ryan Keats is going to be the NC State's basketball coach next year. Not unless Miles gets him another job. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't see that happening. It's it's fine. It's fine. I mean, honestly, as somebody who has said, you know what? Maybe it's time for a change. I mean, I'm not going to back off of that. But after this week, hey, man, Kevin Keats earned it. I mean, I really don't. I don't know how else to put it. He earned it straight up. So um, give him another shot. Hopefully, you know, lessons. Le- this is another lessons learned kind of situation. What are you laughing at now? The the comments are. Oh, the comments are going. People are, people are pumped. They're like fired it. up, man. They're fired up. It's late at night. They've been drinking. A couple people have already pointed out that they're drunk. Boo-boo. <laughs> Ran in the house. My beard gang shirts. Yes. Yes. Get up here. Get up here. <laughs> wear, the, uh, wear that beard gang shirt for sure. <laughs> anyway, I don't know how this is going to sound in podcast form, but it was a hell of a lot of fun on YouTube. I'm glad we've been able to do this. That is going to wrap it up for this OG After Dark We will see you tomorrow evening following the NC State North Carolina ACC Championship. Joe, it is the last call for basketball. For basketball, the ACC is never going to be the same after tomorrow night in basketball. So enjoy it. You couldn't have asked for a better situation uh, for us in the triangle. We will see you tomorrow.